Previewing the card for Shatin on Sunday afternoon, we go Group 1 racing with the Stewards Cup, but we do kick things off with a Class 5 over the trip of 1,200 metres to open the card at 1pm. It is the Beacon Hill Handicap, and here's the field. Daily Trophy dropping in grade for the first time. Alice Wong taking £10 off. Norda combined on the backup from Wednesday night, a Happy Valley. Choice of Us, another one on the downgrade. Spangle Fortune, Sweet Diamond ran third last time out behind Double Show. Rattan World always misses the start, and the then you've got all is ready. Uh, fingers crossed the blinkers are off. The blinkers are off dashing glory. The hood goes on and the pacifiers with the cowls go on. Great days. Number 12, Fighting Star, Millennium Falcon all the way down on a rating of 28 now. Paul, eight trigrams. He likes to lead. They they push forward on fingers crossed his last uh, two. Uh, can they get across here? I, they might struggle a little bit, but he, he has shown a bit of speed that we haven't seen in the past. So, look, he will try and get across. I mean, eight trigrams has got really good speed, but he's drawn wide as well. So he's going to try and get across. All is ready. I thought Sweet Diamond would just get a perfect run in behind. Let's have a look at uh, the first of the replays, and uh, we're going to uh, highlight here Daily Trophy. Casper found uh, Alice Wong. You see he's uh, almost side-carting around the, the turn here. Uh, Paul last uh, time out off that rating of 41, and it uh, was beaten here by Fast Buck. I, I thought he'd be a, a live chance in this, but it, it's a bit odd, really, because he's a Tarzino over 1,200 metres. Yeah, he does, does do that over the shorter trips. The turf worries me a bit here for him because he's had six go and hasn't finished in the top four on the turf. I mean, we've seen some good runs here on the all-weather, though. Yep, he stayed on there, not beaten overly far, and a, a bit of a blanket finish there for the Miners. Uh, Sweet Diamond, you referenced, uh, should get a, a good run here in transit. So he was third. Uh, great days, dashing glory, um, both against those two horses. Yeah, me too. I, like, I do like Sweet Diamond, though. He's one off a rating of 50. He's rated 35. His win did come at Shartan, and he's back at Shartan now as well. So by Zoostar, this uh, horse, number five, Sweet Diamond, uh, he, he finished off nicely enough here. I like him coming back to the big uh, track. I, I think this is uh, quite a good race for him. And he won off a rating of 50, so you yeah. think if he was going to front up, it might be in uh, this race. Uh, one more to have a look at. A few coming through this replay, in fact. Uh, fingers crossed up front. Great days. Fighting star running on. Uh, Rattan World running on uh, again uh, last uh, time out. But uh, starts continue to plague him. Yeah, definitely. So that, that's the query. Um, I mean, Zach uh, is uh, aboard him once again because he did run off an all-weather run last start. He's run third of 40. He, he's more than capable. I don't think this is a strong field. So look, I'm, I'm going to include uh, Rattan World. Yeah, the horse that won that race was uh, Crystal Powerful. Mm and he was able to win again midweek at Happy Valley. Selections for the opener? Going to go with the horse we've been talking about there, Sweet Diamond. He's one off the rating of 50, should be in the right place. Ratham World second. All is ready. Now, he's one off on this turf before as well, and his was off a 37 rating. He's 32 rated. And Choice R Us, uh, he's been the downgraded, so he's sort of the new kid in the block in this grade. Five, seven, eight, three. Those are Paul's selections for race number one. It is the Class 5 to open the Sunday card at Sharpton 1pm for the first leg of the first double trio. Race number two is the Caroline Hill Handicap. It's a Class 4 race and it is over the distance of 1,400 metres. Here is the lineup, but with Charity Bingo dropping in grade for the first time. Started here on a rating of 72. Uh, Circuit Mighty was terrible last time out. He's been back to the trial since. Fast Victory, he's having his second go in the grade. Not sure what we're going to get from Galvanic this week. Uh, fight time is a newcomer for David Hall and Matthew Poon. California Totality, he's run well at both of his starts. Golden Rise for uh, Zach Purton and David Hall. Davis, uh, 12, has had uh, a recent uh, trial run second. Riverview, Sunny Shines, Natural Gold. Uh, Nishikado further back down here with uh, Prince uh, Chiswick, and he's got the uh, cheek pieces being removed. He's a recent trial winner. And Bulb Prince, he's uh, a couple of points off dropping in grade. Uh, Riverview's here, Paul. Now, uh, they like to go forward with him, but they, they didn't lead on him last start or the start before. Yeah, so we'll see what happens from uh, from this draw. But Natural Gold uh, has led his last couple, so he might just press on with it. Fast Victory likes to sit there. I thought Golden Rise would get a perfect run from his draw. Prince Cheswick likes to go forward. Galvanic's drawn wide. He'll try and slot in. Nishikado, he's midfield. He's here over 1,400 metres, but he's also nominated for 1,200 metres on the dirt on Wednesday. OK, so we'll see how he runs uh, Nishikado out of the stable of Mi Choi. I'll be going to a California totality here. Uh, Paul, he put up a, a good performance as son of Zustar last uh, time out. 
uh, 26 to 1 here behind Araki Summit. Yeah, it was a really good run here as well. You could see him um, coming out wide and finishing off really strongly. Take Action is going to be probably one of the favourites in another race, uh, the horse that runs fourth. So uh, it's, it was a good form race. Araki Summit got it easy on, in the lead as well. So he had to come from well back. He's only had the two starts. He seems to be on the improve. I think he's one of the main main chances in the race. I think he can improve once again. He was very expense, expensive, rather yearling California totality at nine hundred thousand dollars out of Australia. So we're looking to recoup some of that here. And we go to Golden Rise, Paul, and he's had a, a few runs now, four to be precise, uh, three at Happy Valley, one at Charton last uh, time out. Still looks like he's got a, a little bit to learn. Yeah, he, he does, uh, definitely. He should get a, a good run, though, just in behind the pace. This will be his fifth start, uh, second start here at Charton. I think he's just about ready to win this horse. He goes nice. Now, Riverviews, as you mentioned, didn't r r lead in his last two starts, but Alice Wong wasn't really keen to push him to the lead. He's got Karis Teaton aboard, a senior rider, so I think you'll see a better run out of him. OK, we'll see uh, what uh, Riverviews can do, but certainly keen on uh, Golden Rise in that race. Off we go to the trials now. Two trials to uh, have a look at. The first is uh, uh, Davis 12. I think this is a horse that's slowly improving. Only beaten two lengths behind Fighting Machine last start. Admittedly, he was beaten at his, at his next subsequent start. Yeah, he was. Uh, barrier 6, so he should get a nice enough run. As you say, he's had the three starts. And so, um, look, he's on the improve. I'm happy just to watch him one more time. But uh, as you say, the trial wasn't too bad and he coasted the line easy enough here. Yeah? Yeah, Galvanic was in that uh, trial there as well. He's in the uh, the green and the orange and uh, Voyage Bubble, of course, in that down the outside. Uh, on we go to uh, Prince Chiswick now up at uh, Sharton here over the 1,200 metres. Uh, Circuit Mighty, this is where he's done all of his winning, but... Um, wasn't overly keen on the trial, to be honest. No, there's been a bit of money from his last two starts, but he's been he's been disappointing both starts in the trial. He was pushed out here at the back as well. So I'd like to see him do it again. Prince Chiswick uh, went well, and this trial was a really nice trial from him, but he's drawn 12. I uh, just think he might be caught a little bit wide. Being by Swiss Ace, I wonder if they will run him on the all-weather, because it was quite an impressive all-weather trial. He looked to move pretty well there, and he comes out of the Ricky U stable. Alexi Bedell riding from barrier number 12. Uh, who's on top for the second, Paul? Got to go with Golden Rise. I think Golden Rise is ready to win. He'll get a nice run just in behind. California totality keeps improving. Look, Charity Bingo, you mentioned at the start, he, he arrived in a rating in the 70s. He's down to 59. I think he's just about at a rating where he can perform into class four. And then River Views with a C your rider aboard 7619 that is race number two of the afternoon at uh, Sha Tin a few class droppers uh, there to uh, make it not the easiest race to try and sort out the early treble gets underway with race number three at uh, Sha Tin and here is the lineup for the class three over 1200 meters just a field of 10 to uh, partake here I'm a single man. He is dropping in grade. Hasn't won for 385 days. Wunderbar's won three of four. Uh, Kaima got knocked over at the start last time out. We'll see that shortly. Kaying Rising was beaten by Wunderbar. He's three pounds better off at the weights this time round. Jumbo Fortune is having his sixth run in 42 days. Solar Partner ready to win ace victory and Partier down towards the bottom. Pace here, Paul, uh, looks between the two horses that uh, no doubt uh, most will have on their tickets here, Kaying rising into Wunderbar. Is there anyone else to challenge? Well, Ace Victory's draw number one, it's possible, but I wouldn't thought Wunderbar would want to be get stuck behind Ace Victory because um, he sort of dropped out in his race. As, as such, I think they'll be positive uh, James McDonald from Barrier 2 and try and cross Ace Victory. Kaying rising is drawn wide, and I think if he if he doesn't be positive, he's going to be three wide. So that's why I thought they still would get out there together. Uh, Solar Partner can just drop in behind. Partia, likewise, ready to win. Uh, Kaima, you know, he was slow away last time and got checked, but I, 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 he's sort of been a little bit slow away in his trolls as well. We can hear from Zach Purton. He is riding one of the main fancies in the race. That is Kaying Rising. Zach, nice book of rides coming up uh, on a big day's racing this Sunday. Uh, Kaying Rising is one of them. Very lightly raced horse, untapped potential, and had a protracted battle with Vonderbar last time. And you'll meet uh, meet again. Yeah, so uh, we probably re reversed the gates a little bit this time. I drew inside him the other day, and he draws inside me this time. Um, but yeah, we had a nice run in the race. I, I thought that we had it. My horse gave everything he could and Wonderbar is obviously a, a serious horse himself and he kept fighting and 
you know, the bob went his way. So it was a little bit disappointing, but um, my horse lost no admirers in his effort. Um, I thought he was very tenacious in the way he did it. Yeah, he was very good indeed, and obviously slightly better off at the weights with him this time as well. So I imagine you'd be certainly relishing having another crack at him. That'll help for sure, but uh, we just need to navigate a path from the gate. Given the way he won on debut, he was obviously much the best there. He was a little bit closer. Is that always an option with him in this race? I mean, it seems like it's a race in two, potentially, between you and Von der Bar again. But is he a horse that you'd maybe like to ride that bit closer, possibly, given, you know, now that you've, you've already raced against Von der Bar the once? Well, it just depends on, you know, the opposition we face every time we go out there. Um, every race is a little bit different tactically, and it'll depend how he begins as well. But um, he's a versatile horse. He's, he's led in trials. He's set outside the lead, he's taken a sit, uh, he's got a really good brain and I think that that's going to take him a long way. He certainly looks versatile, he certainly looks very talented as well. Have you had a chance to sit on him since that run? Yeah, I worked him the other morning, um, he's in good form so I'm looking forward to riding him. He's a horse that certainly has something, doesn't he? I know David's always fought quite a bit of him and obviously his trials form has always suggested he was going to be smart but he certainly has all the right minerals, doesn't he? Well, he's got a good brain yeah. and um, although he's not fully developed and mature and as strong as uh, he's going to end up. Um, he's doing a good job for where he's at and I think he can continue to improve as he goes along. Great to hear there from Zach Purton who rides at Kaying Rising. Let's go back and look at this replay once again because it's got a few other runners in it uh, like Jumbo Fortune, Ace Victory uh, ready to win but uh, Wunderbar here, uh, Paul, right behind uh, Super Fortune. Uh, is able to eventually clear traffic over on the inside for uh, James McDonald, and they had a, a great battle over the final stages. Yeah, this is what I was talking about with Ace Victory, because they were sort of long outside each other in the run. One's drawn one, one's drawn two. I thought Wunderbar would want to try and get in front of Ace Victory, but um, it's, he's a possibility. But you, you can see uh, going really nicely here, these two horses, they squared off. There wasn't much between them. The, the what, thing that worries me a bit, as is, is Zach said, is the draw's been reversed, so that'll overtake the weight you know, difference in that there's three pounds different. But um, I think Wunderbar can beat him again. Yep, I certainly agree. Let's take you back to the start now of uh, Kaima here now. Where this horse has only had the, the one run. Look at him here at the, the start. He just gets uh, knocked from pillar to post to there and gets back. Um, Pleasant Endeavour, of course, has uh, won through this race. We've seen Heroic Master run well enough uh, midweek as well at Happy Valley. He's last here, Paul, approaching the 400 metre orange marker there, and he makes some solid ground late, doesn't he? His closing section was 22.37, so it was, was one of the best in the race. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, he doesn't help himself at the start, so as you saw him being a little bit slow away and then got sandwiched, he's done that in his trials as well, but he's got away with it in his trials. Uh, he obviously didn't get away with it here on race day. You can see him making up really good ground. He's not the biggest horse around. He's only 900 odd pounds. So I, I just want to um, see him one more time, see if he jumps. If he jumps, then I'll be interested in him in the start after. He yeah, placed over 1,200 metres in the UK prior to uh, arriving. Uh, Wunderbar, Kaying Rising, or doing the old switcheroo here? No, I'm going to go with Wunderbar. I think Wunderbar can beat Kaying Rising again. They had a great battle last time. Uh, Ready to win's a well rated horse now. He's one of 64. He's at this 62 rating. So he's he's got his chance. And Solar Partner, prefer him at Happy Valley but I still think he can run a race here at Chartan. He has been placed numerous times. 2486. Should be a fantastic battle between Kaying Rising and Wunderbar. Stay tuned for that. It's race number three at 2 p.m. We're down the straight for race number four. There's a few debutants going around in this race as well. It is class four, and it is the first league of the Triple Trio. Rise Companions is the scratching, however. He was likely to go off as the favourite. He is out with a tendered injury, and Valiant Elegance gets in with the Andrea Atzini. Let's look at the lineup, and here we've got in the field Midori Beauty. He's back. For another go round is Midori Beauty of the 11 start made in Super Commander. He was a winner eight days ago. Fun Alita winner on debut. Ruby Lots had a few chances yet to get his nose in front. Uh, Sky Trust is on debut out of Casper uh, Founds' uh, stable. And he races his half brother, Midori Beauty. Uh, Glory B here as well with the Panda. Same to you. Uh, heyday, speedy fortune for Zach Purton. Ho Ho Star for Dinner Ship has got the blinkers on. He's trolled up with the blinkers. And Jazz Club, one point away from a class five berth. Uh, pace in this race, uh, Paul, Super Commander, uh, Super Axiom, they'll go forward as they typically do, and Valiant Elegance won't be far away. He won't be far away, will he? His speedy fortune is drawn towards the outside, Panda likewise, so they, they should get nice runs. 
Fun Elite who won on debut, he was about just behind the pace. I think there'll be something similar here, and Ruby Lott will come across as well. Um, who's going to lead? Super Axiom, Super Commander. It's one of those ones. They're both are, are, are speedsters, and they both like to lead. Yep, and uh, they're both apprentice-ridden. Alice Wong on Sir one, Angus Chung on the other. Down the straight, we find some action here with the Super Commander uh, winning uh, last Saturday. Uh, Paul, on the, the 13th of uh, January, this was the race where there were a couple of uh, late scratchings and um, they couldn't catch him in the end again. No, straight to the front. He, he'll get pressure from Super Axiom this time, though. That was what worried me here. That it, it's just that... Um, uh, extra pressure on him. He didn't have any pressure in this race whatsoever. He had a senior rider. He's going to have an apprentice, so he will get some weight off his back. And he, he stayed on and he managed to get his nose in front. So I just think this was his win, though. Yep, indeed. But uh, pierre has got him going well at, at the moment. On we go to the next of them, and uh, this is Fun Elite. Now, he was heavily supported at his uh, debut. Here he is on the, the far side, and the dark blue and the light blue, a horse that had trialled well, a colt by Brazen Bow, and he shortened and pulled to, to nine to one and one by a length and a half. Nice win. He drew four here. He's drawn better in barrier number 10 as well. So, uh, look, I think he'll do something similar here, set off the pace. Uh, there will be plenty of pace with the Supers in the race. I can see him winning again. I thought this was a good good uh, win from him. Baby Crystal um, we, has already been a winner, so he, he's beaten the, sub, uh, the winner. Um, he's beaten a, a winner in, in Baby Crystal, and um, they were well clear of anything else. So, look, it was a good win. Yep, certainly was. A few more to look at. I think Speedy Fortune's uh, right in this here. Zach Purton uh, takes over the mount for John Size, drawn barrier 12 towards the grandstand rail. Never won course and distance from five, but has been runner-up on three occasions. Yeah, and I've included him as well, as you say, Speedy Fortune, and uh, he, he finished off nice. He's drawn well. Uh, and it was a good run from him. Heyday wasn't too far away. Uh, he sort of slowly get in there. He finished off nicely enough as well. But, um, yeah, of, of this lot, definitely just the one. Speedy Fortune is the one to take out. OK, there he is uh, running second to uh, James Tack. We saw him in a video just before. A first starter out of the Casper Founds uh, stable is Sky Trust. And uh, he's a, a three-year-old by So You Think. He's had three trials up at Chungfa. He was $270,000 out of the NZB uh, Book One uh, sale there and uh, trialled up a, a couple of times in New Zealand with Graham Richardson and uh, Rogan Norville. Being by So You Think, you'd think you'd probably want more than this, the, the 1,000 metres, but I haven't minded his trials. So it was OK, yeah, as you say, but look, by So You Think, out of an exceed and excel mare, yeah, you'd be definitely looking for 14 plus, I think, uh, in the long term, Sky Trust. So I'm happy to watch him go around, and as you say, it's unusual, but we've got two half brothers running around. One of your old favourites, Midori Beauty, in there as well. <laughs> yes, he's back here, yeah, but uh, sometimes you have to question the desire of uh, Midori Beauty. But uh, Sky Trust, he's been a little bit slow out in a few of his barrier trials. Who's on top? Going to go with the three, Fun Elite. I think he can make it two from two. It was a nice debut run from him. Panda's one we haven't talked about, the Dennis Yip runner. Uh, he should get, he ran, he's only had the two starts, ran a nice fourth behind 80 light years last time. Coming back to 1,000 should be good for him. Speedy Fortune and Ruby Lot has been consistent without winning. 3 9 12, 4. Race number four down the straight uh, for the afternoon here at Charton to open the triple trio on races four, five and six. Race number five of the afternoon kicks off at the Sunday afternoon at six up and it is class four over 1400 metres, the Po Lung Cook Cup. And here's the lineup with Satanta for David Hayes dropping in grade. So too is Compassion Spirit. He's got a very good record in this grade. He's a four-time winner in class four. Only one course in distance, however. Superb Kid Fun and Glory, Prime Mortar. And you've got Golden Bull with James McDonald. Fury and Gold missed the start on debut. Take Action ran well, ran a five-length fourth behind Araki Summit. Free Falls recent trial winner. Sunlight Power got a fair way back and ran on. He's got barrier 14 this time round. Circuit nine up to his old tricks again, missing the start. Smart folks and Lucky Planet. Those are the runners there for race number five. Uh, smart folks here, uh, Paul, um, never travelled at all last time out. Uh, it was quite disappointing. He, he might go forward. He, well, he, he leads over this distance on the turf. Uh, he couldn't go forward on the all weather, but I think he can get forward here on the turf, take action, uh, won't be far away. Free Foles got an inside draw. Uh, Golden Bull uh, can't, won't be too far away. Lucky Planet, superb kid, good to, to get a nice run. Uh, back to Satanta, circuit nine, he, he just does everything wrong at the start, as you say. 
Yes, uh, missing the start again, and like he normally does, uh, Circuit 9. Looking at uh, Take Action, his run was uh, pretty good, I thought, uh, first up, uh, Paul. This was, again, through the Araki Summit race. He was 21 to 1. He, I don't think he'll go any, around anywhere near that price at the weekend off the, the back of this run, and he, he should improve. Yeah, he definitely should, and uh, I think he has, looking at his track work. So I think he's one of the major chances uh, in this race. Now, they didn't go overly fast here. They, the two horses sort of um, crept away. Um, so he was well beaten by those two, but he did stay on really nicely here. Um, and with this run under his belt, I think uh, from a nice barrier, barrier number four, I think John Sizer's horses can improve from start one to start two. I think this is one of them. Yeah, so if you take the winner out, he wasn't beaten overly far from second place, and there was a take action. A couple more to look at here with the Lucky Planet and uh, Fun in Glory, who uh, was seventh here, Fun in Glory. Thought Lucky Planet here, leaders back, every possible chance. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah, as you say, he came out at the right time, so he had every chance uh, to win Lucky Planet. Uh, he does come in with this light weight. He's got a similar draw, barrier number three. Um, he's yet to win here from his eight starts here in Hong Kong. Uh, look, I didn't put him in in the end because I, I thought he had every chance to win. Yeah, I, I think that was certainly the, the case. You can see he's found the front, but uh, in the end was uh, run down over the final stages here behind Dream Pursuer. The, the format of this race might get a little boost earlier in the card with uh, Golden Rise, but uh, look to have every chance there. The Douglas White trained a galloper. A Compassion Spirit has been uh, at the trials at Sha Tin and uh, ran third here, Paula. I mentioned his record coming down in grade. Zach Purton riding for Manfred Mann. Trial uh, looked uh, OK, and uh, he's had 63 days since his last run. I know he's won here at Sha Tin, but his better runs have been at Happy Valley. He's a four-time winner there at Happy Valley. So I was, I was sort of wanting to get back, waiting to, for him to get back there. But in saying that, Zach Purton's jumped the board. He's got a good draw, and he's got a good uh, record on the grade. So he should run well. Yep, not beaten overly far in that uh, trial and uh, seemed to move fairly well there. As you mentioned, four wins at Sha Tin, uh, four wins at Happy Valley rather, one win at Sha Tin. Uh, some track work, Paul, on a, a runner that you're keen on. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, looking at some value in this one and that's Satanta. Uh, working with a horse, Chateau Neuf, who hasn't yet raced um, here in Hong Kong. They're both by Fastnet Rock, funny enough, but uh, Chateau Neuf has won a trial. Look, Satanta, I thought, was going the better of the two. He's downgraded and he's one for one in the grade. Yep, he's actually run okay his last a couple of so we'll see what he can do. So he's on top. Who's second, third and fourth? Yeah, make him the value better of the, of the meeting there, Satanta, the one. So he's on top, uh, take action, come out of that race. Some like Power, he, he did finish off strongly last time and so did Superb Kid. So 1, 8, 10 and 3. Race number 5, the 6-up is underway at Charton, 3pm for the 5th of the afternoon. Race number six, the Diamond Hill Handicap, and uh, here's the field to, for it. After we see Handsome Bomb, who has been replaced by Ever Victorious, with uh, Vincent Ho riding for uh, the ride uh, there on Ever Victorious, trained by Ricky Yoop. So we're 1,200 metres here for the Diamond Hill Handicap. Super Goldie, the son of Tavistock, a winner on debut. Triumphant Warrior didn't do a great deal after getting checked into the first turn at Happy Valley last start. Geneva is a newcomer for David Hall and Hugh Bowman. Uh, Le Mayu Jean is lining up for, for uh, Angus Chung, hasn't done a great deal at the, the trials. Pingwu Sparkle, James McDonald from 14, Gangnam Star better drawn this week. Compassion Super, the crossover nose band off. Go Hero, Hood goes on for the first time. Massive talent, cheek pieces, uh, cheek pieces with the tongue tie for the first time. Po on way, fantastic choice looking to uh, win again. And Strath Petha down towards the bottom for Douglas White and Karis Teton. A uh, Pingwu Sparkle here, Paul, you think has got the toe to lead? He did in a recent trial. He came across and won that trial really easily. If he doesn't, the first start of Geneva, he's drawn well in barrier four and he's showing plenty of pace. But I thought Hugh would be happy to let something go. Compassion Super can get himself into a nice position. Super Goldie, now he's one from one here in Hong Kong, but drawn wide, he'll just need a little bit of luck from his wide draw. A Po on Ray went better at his last start, but that was at Happy Valley. Super Goldie was a winner on debut. He beat a horse called Top Scorer, who's given the form a little boost by running second. Again, let's hear from his trainer, it's Frankie Law. Frankie Law, you've got a very interesting runner second up this weekend by the name of Super Goldie in race six. Perfect start to his career, nice win on debut. Um, talk me through it from, from your perspective. Yeah, the uh, first start, he got a good draw. Draw one, more easy for him. He's uh, one really good uh, at, that, at that day, yeah. I was really happy, yeah. He showed a bit prior to that run in his trials. Were you fully expecting him to, to run a, a big race like that on debut? 
yeah, I, I think he will want good, but uh, for me, uh, he win the race. I think uh, made me really happy because uh, first start he can win the race. He's uh, he's a horse, Frankie, who cost a, a few dollars at the sale, four point six million at the ISG. So I guess there was a, a bit of pressure there for for you and his connections. Still a bit green though in the run. So are you confident that there's still a bit more to come from this guy? Uh, for me, he's he looks a bit improved, but uh, he's still uh, lead, uh, in, uh, learning, still lead learning, and uh, this time he carried big weight. So the jaw's not really good, jaw nine, to see how he's jumping, yeah. Um, he's by Tavistock. Now, I had a look at his pedigree, and it would suggest that in time he might get a bit further. From your riders and those that have ridden him, is the suggestion that, that maybe in time he could get that little bit further, or is 12 his trip for now, do you think? Yeah, he can go a bit further, because uh, you can see he's uh, not a big, strong horse. I think later on he can go a little bit further, 14, 16, yeah. Frankie Law on Super Goldie looking to make it two from two at Charton on Sunday. We can move on and have a look at uh, Gangnam Star who was back in the field to hear uh, Paul. Did a little bit wrong in his first couple of starts. Uh, beaten four lengths last uh, time out, but uh, I did like the way he finished off and he's, he's better drawn for this assignment. He is. I, I look back to that third on debut behind... Um uh, Vindabar was a really good rate, run from him. That was down the straight. He's had a couple of runs around the bend now. He's drawn nicely in barrier number two. Look, I haven't got him on a win line, but I am going to include him because, look, I think there's definitely ability there, and I like the way he finished off strongly in this race. Yes, it was certainly a good effort, I thought, from Gangnam Star, so uh, warrant some respect in this. Uh, the horse that will no doubt take a bit of money here is Geneva, who's a first starter by Capitalist out of a Sebring mare with 625000 through the NZB Ready to Run sale. He was the top lot of that year, trained by Ben Foot New Zealand, trialled there, then transferred to Mitchell Friedman's yard and had a jump out uh, there. Uh, what about him, Paul? Yeah, he looks good. He's looked good in both his trials. He's won both of them. Obviously an expensive uh, yearling as well. It doesn't always equate on the uh, racetrack, but um, he's looked he's looked good in this trial, so he's definitely going to be uh, he's one of the main chances. Of it. What price do you reckon he's going to go off at? Yeah, I reckon he, 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 Hugh Bowman aboard, he could be a little bit short. Yep, David mm. Hall as well. So we'll see what uh, transpires uh, there. Is he on top? Yeah, we'll go with him in the end. I toss up in this race. I didn't didn't mind Pingu's Sparkles trial as well. So I was going to I went between the two of them. I ended up with Geneva though to beat Pingu Sparkle. Uh, Super Gold, he, he just need luck from his wide draw and Gangnam Star, 3718. That is the preview for race number six. Super Goldie looking to uh, stay unbeaten uh, and uh, in the race as well, Geneva, who's looking to win at his Hong Kong debut. We go Group 1 racing for race number seven. It is the 2024 Stewards Cup over the 1600 metres. And uh, here is the lineup with California Spangle. The cheek pieces are going on. Hugh Bowman, Tony Cruz, Voyage Bubble, second to Golden 60 last time out. Straight Aaron was fourth to Romantic Warrior. And the Longines Hong Kong Cup Russian Emperor uh, bypassed HKIR with a little issue. Beauty Eternal was sixth behind Golden 60. Beauty Joy ran third in the Chinese Club Challenge Cup behind Taj Dragon. Healthy Happy was second in that race after being up on the pace. And Fantastic Treasure was fourth in that race, beaten two and three quarters. David David Hayes, Karis Teton. California Spangle here, Paul Hill lead, but healthy, happy, no doubt there to keep him honest. Yeah, so he's on this outside there. Voyage Bubble will get the lovely run in behind. Beauty Joy, fantastic treasure. Beauty Eternal um, is drawn the outside. So I think you're just going to have to slot in. The two beauties could split, um, depending how they jump, could uh, spin themselves around there. But straight Aaron and Russian Emperor will be up the back. I don't think there's going to be too much change to that. Well, John Size has won this race at the Stewards' Cup seven times. He's looking to a partner with Zach Purton to win it again with Beauty Eternal. Zach, big day coming up on Sunday. It is, of course, the uh, the Stewards' Cup, a race you've got a, a pretty decent history with. Uh, Beauty Eternal is your ride. Um, you must be looking forward to getting on him again. Yeah, he's an exciting horse. Um, he's got a good record. Uh, it's a fairly even race. I think it's just going to come down to how the race is run and tempo of the day and track bias and all those things, but uh, at the end, end of it, I, I think who gets the best run in the race is, is probably going to come out the victor. I had a chat with John Size. Now, obviously, he, he trains the horse, knows him extremely well, etc. He seemed to be of the opinion that the occasion on International Day may just have got to him that, that little bit. What, what was your take on it? Um, possibly. Um, his attitude, as we know, can, can get the better of him a little bit at times. Um, the big crowd might have sort of wound him up a little bit more but I just 
I, I ended up a little bit further back than where I ideally would have liked to have been and I, the pace of the race didn't really suit me and he travelled a little bit strong but in saying all of that, it was a good opportunity for him to sit back the way he did and, and really attack the line strongly. And if anything, I was pretty disappointed with his last furlong's effort. <clears throat> I, th I thought he he should have, um, like I said, got out after them a little bit more than what he did. So it, it is what it is. The occasion might have got to him, the tempo of the race might have got to him. Um, but yeah, he's, he's also just does a couple of little things wrong and just wants to travel a little bit too strong um, during the running of the race and you know when you're as tense as that it can sometimes gas you a little bit and I, I think it did on that occasion but uh, he gets his chance to try and atone here. Yeah, so, I mean it's interesting you say obviously the last 12 months have been sort of very up and down for him but more up than down with obviously seven wins. Um, I know you've only got the tapes to watch but a couple of trials obviously Brenton Abdul has kept the saddle warm for you. You've happy with what you've seen? He's not a brilliant trialer on the dirt. It's not his preferred surface, but as long as he rolls around there and and uh, gets the required amount of exercise that he needs, that, that that's all he's there for. And you know, he's a much better horse on on firm, rock hard ground on race day. Special race this for you and John, isn't it? Really, I mean, obviously, the, I think this was your first big group one here, and obviously Waikuku recently as well. So it's always a always a race. I imagine you look forward to riding it. Yeah, it is. Any of the group ones are, are good to be in, and it's good to have another chance. And you know. John's been more successful than I have in it, so uh, I'm not going to catch him, but it'd be nice to win another one for him. So Zach Purton touching on Beauty Eternal. For the full uh, interview there, you can hear from Zach on the main show, Racing to Win, hkjc.com. If you're watching it uh, there on the website, just scroll up, you'll find it, or you'll be able to find it on YouTube as well. Moving on from Beauty Eternal, Paul, to having a look at that last run again in the Hong Kong Mile with California Spangle, who had the trail, couldn't lead to here. Uh, also uh, here, Voyage Bubble, who's uh, right next to Golden 60. Is this Voyage Bubble's opportunity to get a, a big scalp on the board here at Group 1 level? Of course, he's a, a derby winner, but uh, can he take it to the next step here? I think he can. It's, he's drawn nicely in Barrier 3. You can sit behind California Spangle. There's no match, obviously, for the winner here in uh, Golden 60. Look, he, I, he had the measure of beauty eternal in this race, and he had the measure of beauty joy. And I think they're the two major dangers for him here in this particular contest. So I just really like the way he stretched out. I, I, you know, I think he can win, is the answer to your question. Yeah, we heard in the interview there from Zach saying he was a little disappointed with the last furlong of Beauty Eternal and he, he just looked a little sort of weak there late and that wouldn't have helped by him pulling in the early part of the race. Yeah, exactly. He just needs to settle a little bit and he's drawn the outside gate so he might just have to go back. Back to the Hong Kong Cup and it is uh, straight Aaron here who's right behind them. It wouldn't have helped having uh, Champion Dragon uh, coming back uh, into, your, into his face here and there was a sort of a little bit of interference there so that wasn't ideal and then he found a little bit more trouble in the straight too. Yeah, the, the problem, um, it was a great run, the problem with this race is at 1600 metres, he's been three zip over the distance, this 2000 metre race he only starts to warm up when he gets sort of 1800, 2000 plus, so look I've got him in on a very minor line but look with these really good milers in this race I think he just might struggle to, to win the race. So that is him on the inside, not beaten far. It was only about three quarters of a length at the line there. Uh, head on here as well. You can see he's right behind Romantic uh, Warrior there next to, uh, to uh, Nimble Nimbus and uh, was able to get through that gap. But then uh, a little bit of late interference here as well, having to, to switch further down to the inside when Romantic Warrior uh, rolled in there. So uh, no doubt they've got uh, a bit uh, further in trip uh, on the radar in the coming weeks and months for straight Aaron. On we go to the Chinese Club Challenge Cup, the Group 3 race on uh, New Year's Day. Beauty Joy uh, ran well here, Paul. Now, California Span gets the, the little bit of pressure up front here, but I don't think you can really add that to, to being an excuse for him because the, the horse on his outside, Healthy Happy, has comprehensively beaten him home. Yeah, he has, hasn't he? And uh, look, he, can, he sort of drops out. He might have finished a place closer. Fantastic Treasure finished off OK and Beauty Joy once again. But look, I think we've seen the main form race was the one beforehand, wasn't it? The, the Group 1. Um, you know, these horses definitely all had their chances here. And this, I think, they'd certainly targeted the, the Chinese Club Challenge Cup for Healthy Happy. It's a race he's won in the past. They bypassed International Day. And those are more sort of the races that he can compete in these days. Correct. Yeah, I think this is a lot tougher for him.
OK, uh, tips for the main event. Yeah, Roy Bubble, I think he can win his Group 1 here. He looks uh, really well placed from barrier number 3. Beauty Eternal, Beauty Joy and Straight Aaron in behind. But do like the two. Two, five, six, three. The Group 1 feature at Shantin on Sunday afternoon is set to jump at 5 minutes past 4 o'clock. We've got a Class 2 staying race over the 2,000 metres. It's for a rating spread to 90 through 65 for the Kungshan Handicap to open the final treble. And uh, Bourbonier uh, carries top weight here of 135. The best peaks drawn awkwardly. Barrier 13, Butterfield, hasn't won for 994 days. CP Brave's been able to uh, resurrect his career. He's won his last two. And Chewed has won three of four. Columbus County hasn't won for 1,180 days. And Elliptical is on a... Eight day turnaround, ran four and a half lengths behind Fallon last time out. Hammer on a good recent trial winner, Beauty Live for one at about this time last year. In fact, this day in a class two over 1600 metres. Woodfire Bro uh, was relegated last time out. Carrying Generation on a quick turnaround and Enigma at the bottom. Pace here, Paul, all important barrier draws, uh, some here over the 2,000 metres. Uh, Bourbonier likes to roll on. Yeah, I think he'll try and get there before that first span because it comes up pretty quickly and he's drawn eight. The alternative lead is Woodfire Bro, he's drawn on the inside, so uh, one of those two should be able to lead. Uh, Insured should get a really nice run, Beauty Live, up and trip. So he might just be a little bit more forward. Enigma might do it tougher on that first bend with Columbus County looking for some cover. OK, that is the pace. So let's hear from the trainer of uh, Bourbon Air. That is uh, John Size, who uh, lines up at the now six-year-old gelding here for another go-round. John, race eight on Sunday's programme looks an interesting contest over a bit of distance. You've got a couple of runners. Let's start with Ensued, who's, who's really coming on leaps and bounds and another smart win last time. Yeah, he's, he's, um, he's made a, a big impact on, on, uh, with his racing. He's, he's started off with a win immediately and uh, he's built on that so um, he's been a good find for uh, for racing in Hong Kong he's going very well he's had a, only a couple of goes over the distance he's won won both of them has he sort of surprised you with what he's been able to do I mean that win first up for example it takes a good horse to sort of do that yeah well he showed us that it, that um, uh, he didn't have much pace and he was going to be a staying horse so um, uh, I put him in an 1800 first up which is a little bit unusual but that's what he was looking for. Um, so he got to come through that quite well. Uh, one again, done everything correctly. Uh, he's a horse with a good temperament, very quiet, and um, uh, he enjoys his racing. You've given him a, a break up in Chung Far as well. He has trialled there. Were you, were you pleased with that trial? Yeah, it seems to be in good shape. He's, everything's working, he's in good order. Uh, his trial was normal for him. Um, he's not a good trial horse, of course, being a stayer, but um, he looks good. Uh, I, I would expect that he'd run, he'd run well again. And just without obviously putting the cart before the horse, John, obviously a lot of talk of four-year-olds, etc. But I guess uh, with this guy and just the sort of his makeup and, and what he's done, are you sort of looking towards maybe more a derby with him than, than the other two legs, possibly? Uh, I think he'll run in the, in the Classic Cup, the 1800. Uh, we, we probably miss the mile. Uh, we might be wasting our energy there, maybe give him some uh, uh, easy time before the Classic Cup and then go into the Derby. He's going to be joined in this race, John, by Bourbon Air, um, a horse we know loves a bit of cut in the ground. Uh, I guess he's a bit of a sort of hostage to fortune because he does, is he very reliant on that sort of ground? Is that, is that your opinion of him as well, like many might be? Yeah, it appears so. I mean, he, he can he can run a good race on a, on a dry track, but uh, he's m more inconsistent on the dry. And um, on a wet track, uh, we, he hasn't had many to, to get a good guide or history of him, but he certainly uh, excels on the on the wet track. So sadly, he's not going to get one of those in the in the winter time. But um, he's probably going to drop. Uh, a little bit of rating before the rain comes and then he might win a race later on the season. Let's hope he does, obviously two strong chances there. I must just ask you about Beauty Eternal as well in the big one, a race that you've had a, a great history and you've, you've almost farmed it down through the years really. How, how is he? He's in good shape. Uh, you know, he was in very good order going into the international mile but uh, I think the, the big occasion uh, might have been just a little bit uh, too much for him on that day. He was a little bit nervous and uh, he was a bit strong in the run. But 
the race, the, the, the run was still sound. He finished beside uh, Beauty Joy, who they finished with each other the previous start. So I think uh, probably the run was pretty good for, uh, for the Stewart's Cup. This is a, a lot less of an occasion and um, it gives some of the other horses uh, a chance to win, win a Group 1 race. So I think he run very well. He seems to be in very good order. Just finally, John, I mean, given this is a great one, obviously I mentioned your record in it is a, is a very good one. I think it's seven wins now. How much is this a race that you target? I guess if you've got a horse capable at a mile at this level, you're always going to run it regardless. But is it a race that you always sort of sort of circle in the calendar, wanting to, to have a good runner in it and try and win it again? No, it doesn't work like that. I'm circling the international mile. Usually I can't win it. And then, um, you know, <laughs> five weeks later, they turn up in the Stewart's Cup ready to win. So... That's been that's been how it's how it's happened, but um, yeah, well, I aim a little bit too high, but if uh, if I can get the Stewart's Cup, I have to be satisfied with that. John Sizen, good form on Friday morning, speaking with Nick about uh, not only Bourbon Air but ensued, and a quick comment there on Beauty Eternal as well, going around in the Stewart's Cup. We can move on to a few of the other players here, uh, Paul. Um, we've got Butterfield. Uh, can he bounce back here? The best peach drawn awkwardly again. Um, Hamron. Didn't do too much in this race, but he, he's been up to Chungfrau. Actually, I thought he trialled quite OK up there. Yeah, he didn't trial too badly. The one I'm going to take out, though, is the best peach uh, down the outside here. As Barrier draws 13, 7, 11, 11. He's drawn uh, wide here at 13 again with uh, Hugh aboard. Uh, Zach rode him here. He, look, he finishes off strongly in his races, and he's done that once again. I haven't got him on a win line. I just wonder about Butterfield. He, when's the last time he won? It was. Uh, I can tell you. There you go. I knew 20, you knew this. 2021 Queen Mother Memorial Cup was there the last go. time that Butterfield was able to win off a rating of 101. Uh, another replay to a highlight here, and it's at CP Brave. Hasn't this horse, uh, Paul, turned his form around to CP Brave? Uh, now in the stable of uh, Ricky Yu, uh, Enigma in this race. He's got the trail here behind uh, Kimberly, who was under pressure. But um, he's won by four and a quarter and one and three quarters in his last two now. Yeah, he, look, he's still quite well rated because he has won off a higher rating uh, when he was at a previous uh, stable. So, he, he, look, he is capable. He dropped down the ratings. He sort of lost his form, as you say. Ricky's done a great job with him. He's, he's come back to form now. He's won two. Uh, and he's still um, sort of uh, below his personal best. I'm going, to, I'm going to include him from Barrier 6. Yeah, James McDonald, one from one on CP, you're brave. But uh, interesting race here, Paul, 2,000 metres. Um, one horse headed towards a, a Derby Classic Cup path. Uh, are you with him or going elsewhere? No, I'm going with him, actually, insured, because he, he'll want to get his rating up a little bit to, to get into the Derby insured. He's won three from four. He's at this rating at 83 at the moment. I don't mind Woodfire Bro. He's going to get a perfect run just in behind. The best beats in CP Brave, 5 4.40, the start time for the Class 2 distance race over the 2,000 metres. Class 2 race upcoming here, but this one for the 1,400 metre gallopers. It is uh, the 105 through 80 rating spread for this, and uh, Red Line comes out of the Chinese Club Challenge Cup. How deep is your love returns to Sha Tin and tries 1,400 again. Saw best recently third in a trial up at uh, Chongfa. Flaming Rabbit, Shadow Roll Off, Cheek Pieces Go On, Drawn Big Banner, a three-time course and distance winner. Ortula Begil was fifth behind Taj Dragon. Dancing Codes got barrier one. Uh, Brave Hearts coming back after being gelded. Global Harmony steps up in grade as two to Superb Boy and Mugen, who's four pounds out of the handicap in this particular contest. Uh, Flaming Rabbit to, to go forward here, Paul, but wouldn't shock me if John Big Banner is right there as well. Yeah, exactly. Look, um, Flaming Rabbit has jumped uh, cleanly in his last couple. John Big Banner's back in distance, uh, and he hasn't led over the 1,400 in the past. He does lead when he gets up over this trip, uh, over over longer trips. So I think he's he, he's going to be right there. Sylvester is another one that's going to have to work from a wide draw. Superb Boy uh, likes to race on the pace. He should get a nice run, and Red Lion won't be far away either. First runner to highlight is How Deep Is Your Love coming back from this uh, effort last time out at uh, Happy Valley for third behind uh, uh, Majestic Knight uh, here. Uh, Paul, what about him coming back uh, to uh, Sha Tinny? He's a four-year-old, he's by Deep Field and James McDonald rides. Yeah, a nice run uh, from him once again. I do think he goes slightly better at... Um at uh, Happy Valley, but in saying that, he's only had the two runs at Chartin, so it's hard to say, and he has been placed, to be fair, over both of them. Another good run from him, and uh, look, he, he's going well at the moment, just to carry the weight.
On we go to uh, Red Line. He's in this replay here with Ortula Begil coming out of the Group 3 handicapper on uh, uh, New Year's Day. And uh, he got cleaned up in the straight uh, here when uh, there was a bit of interference between him and uh, California Spangle. So a little excuse uh, here. He might have finished a little bit closer. But I did like the way Ortula Begil finished off. Yeah, he finished off really strongly as well. And he's another horse that does go well here at Shards. And look, when he couldn't get that gap there... He, he, you're right, he, he might have finished one or two places closer, but I don't think he was going to feature in the finish uh, was Red Lion, and maybe a little bit disappointing in hindsight, but uh, he was one of the favourites in that race, wasn't he? Yeah, he certainly was, so went off at uh, 3.4 in the end. On we go to a Global Harmony, this uh, runner by Sham Express, missed the start. Across all the heels at the back of the field here, hooks out wider and really steams home. He's out of the handicap here, here Paul, that wouldn't be too much of a concern. The starts at this type of level, you don't want to miss it, do you? Correct. Yeah, he's got to, He's up with the bigger boys now, and he's gonna. He, he can't give them a start and and do, and um, and do this. But you can in the higher grade. But he did run past Sweet Encounter nicely enough here, and he did win quite cheekily in the end. So it was a really good run from him. As you say, you'll know your fate at the start. But with 115 pounds, I want to keep him safe. Another one that's out of the handicaps here is uh, superb boy Francis Louis, Alexi Bedell, Barrier 2, just beaten here behind uh, Blue Marlin, who's been uh, in good form. Can we can we make a case for him from a, a low draw? Yeah, definitely. Again, lightweight, 115, Barrier number 2. He's going to be right in the right position, his superb boy. So, I mean, he's got a, another one who has to do it up in Class 2. He's been running really well in Class 3. I'm definitely going to include him, um, but just on a minor line as well from that low draw. So both him and Global Harmony with their light weights have both drawn 2 and 3. But, uh, look, Blue Marlin just managed to get his nose down, and um, he was a horse that had been unlucky. So it's a, it's a good form race to come out of, I think. Another little snippet to have a look at here in terms of key races. Uh, Saw Vest uh, finished well back in the end. Uh, Flaming Rabbit. Dancing Co back in the field, we'll get to Dancing Co in a, a second. He's not going as well as he was at the back end of last season, this time round as Flaming Rabbit, is he? No, he doesn't seem to be. He has been a little bit slow away, a little bit tardy in his couple of starts, but the last two starts he's been a lot cleaner out. So cheek pieces will go on him for the first time. We'll see how that um, uh, how that works for him. But I thought it was a great run from Dancing Code, as you mentioned, with um, he beat Helios Express there. It was impressive at his last start. Yeah, and he'll be one of the favourites for the Classic uh, Mile coming up in uh, the early part of February. So we'll see what Dancing Code can do with finally a good draw to work from. He on top, Paul? Yeah, I'm going to go with him. He's drawn nicely in barrier one. He'll be a lot closer in the run. And his last two runs have been full of merit. Global Harmony, he just needs to start. Mugen's a horse we haven't st uh, talked about, but he's been very consistent and he's sneaking up the grades as well. He's another one that comes in with a really light weight. It's a bird boy. So I've gone with Dancing Code and then a three at the lighter weights. 7, 10, 12, 11. Good race is race number nine. The class two for the gallopers here over the 1,400 metres. And the final event at Sharton on Sunday gets underway at 10 minutes to 6 o'clock. It is a Class 3 over 1,400 metres with Armour War Eagle, who ran a huge race at over 101 first up. It's just knocked off in the shadows by Joyful Hunter. The year has been consistent since uh, arriving here, but without winning. Golden Empire, Run Run Cool, Silver Up was much better up at 73 to 1 last uh, time out. Zoom, boom, Hong Kong Hall has got Alice Wong riding for David Hall, the first time they team up. Midori Burley, a bit unlucky last uh, start. D Star, Lost Child ran third. Bonus Pal has done zilch in two runs. Indeed, a last start winner's got a terrible barrier draw again. Storm Rider, impressive, and Ragnar down at the bottom. He is eligible for class four of that mark of 60. Hong Kong Hall led up last time out to Paul in the end. They actually couldn't get past him. Yeah, and he's got an apprentice on, so I think there's, there's the intent there to lead once again. Ragnar's another one that led at his last start. I thought Storm Rider's showing pace. He can try and get across from his wide draw. Lost child, no one that likes to go forward in the air. has got a lot better draw. He's drawn 10, 11, 10 in his last three, and he's drawn barrier one, so he might be closer. Run, run, cool. 1,000 up to 1,400 metres, but doesn't show gate speed over 1,000. I don't know what he's going to do here over 14. Yeah, who would know? So we'll see what uh, he can do. Run, run, cool. But uh, Michael Chang, he trains, of course, in uh, this race, Lost Child, and is to be partnered by Brenton Abdullah.
Brenton Lostchild is your ride in the last race uh, on Sunday afternoon. He's a horse that you're getting to know well and he's holding his form nicely. Yeah, he's been racing really well, Nick. He's um, obviously won well for me there in Class 4 and now he's up to Class 3 at the bottom of it. But um, racing well, racing consistently. He's um, met some pretty strong, stiff Class 3 oppositions too. So um, I've got no doubt he's got, he's got a win capable at this level, uh, but he's just going to need things to go well on the day. I guess what he does have as well, Brenton, as a positive, is a, is a much better draw. His last couple of races, 10 and 13, he now gets 7. So uh, that probably gives you options from there, does it? It does. Look, he's not a horse who probably wants to be ridden on speed. Um, they've ridden him on speed a couple of times and he hasn't finished. And sort of when he won well for me, you know, he was off speed and just made a looping run around him. So he's a horse who probably appreciates a little bit of room, but at the same time, he's probably not good enough just to circle. So he just needs a little bit of things to go his way. But like I said, I think he's um, there to run well again. How's he felt since then, Brenton? Have you had a chance to have a set on him for, for Michael? Yeah, he him a couple of times. He galloped on the back straight the other day and um, on the grass, felt good. So the runs aren't hurting him. Um, he's moving well, so uh, that's all we can take into it. So Brenton Abdullah there with Lost Child speaking to Nick on Friday morning. More replays to have a look at here at Armour War Eagle Paul. This was a massive run from back in the field. He did win at 1,400 metres in New Zealand. He's stepping up to that distance here. Stable needs a winner. Yeah, they do. And look, he, he came down the outside on debut. He hadn't shown much in any of his trials leading into it. But from barrier number three, I think he can, uh, he can run a race once again. He was a massive price here. Uh, and when he came down the outside, I mean, Joyful Hunter has had one run since and was maybe slightly disappointing, but in saying that, it was still a good run here from him. And that's I give, yeah, I give him on the inside, inside. Yeah. so the, the form out of it uh, has been uh, OK with the I give for winning again. Uh, Silver Up, uh, another horse that was at a, a huge price and uh, turned up with a, a good run. What about the year? He's I mean, a little costly now in his last two. Yeah, look, one thing in, a, in his favour of the year is that he's drawn a lot mm. better in barrier one. So he's had to get really well back in his run. So, look, I'm going to include the year from the lower draw. We'll see if he can uh, he can do that. Silver up, I want to see him race again. But it was a good run. There was no, nothing wrong with it. This is second up for him. So he could be a horse on the improve. But I will include the year. Yeah, he's got barrier number one, the year yeah. for Hugh Bowman, and uh, Silver Upper Son of Caravaggio has got barrier number 10, so his widest draw since he's been here in Hong Kong. Uh, on we go to uh, Storm Rider now. This was an impressive performance, uh, Paul, from Storm Rider, winning it only his second start as a 1.8 uh, favourite over uh, Telecom uh, Dragon. Uh, covered some ground around the, the turn here, and... Uh, in the end, just powered away. Yeah, he was a lot of confidence because he was 2.8 into 1.8 in the last five minutes. So a lot of money came for him late, uh, and he really delivered. He won really nicely here. Um, I think he can he can step up and grade and win again. He's just going really nicely. He's only had the two starts, and he looks a horse with a big future, and he won with plenty in hand here. Yeah, certainly did uh, eased up at the line there to a win by about two and three quarters. Can we make a case for Hong Kong Hall at all? Apprentice ridden up in grade. Um, they'll go forward. Uh, this was his second win at uh, the ninth time of asking. Yeah, it was a nice win too. Yeah, look, I, I think this is quite hard, this race. I know that the 10 pounds is going to help him, but he is up in grade here. Um, so he's going to have to compete with these uh, better horses. This is a lot harder race. So, look, I, I didn't put him in in the end, but he'll he'll give you a sight. That's one thing for sure. And um, he should, if he does get left alone with a lightweight, then he could be a bit dangerous if he's up to this grade, which I think he will be in time. He's another one of those horses that backed a few times. They've sort yeah. of left it in a little bit with him as well. So uh, he delivered it four to one here. So we'll see if he can front up in a higher grade this time round. But uh, who's on top in the last? Going with Storm Rider. I really like Storm Rider's win. I think he can win again uh, and overcome that draw, the air with a bit of draw. I'm going to put him dead in because I thought it was a strong win last time and with a bit of pace in this race, he can finish off strongly and then Armour War Eagle with that really good uh, debut run from him. 13 to 12 one but uh, it's more around the 13 for me. Those are Paul's tips for the final event at Tshartan. On a Group 1 Sunday afternoon, you can find the fields, the form guide, everything you need to know on the website, hkjc.com. The race-by-race previews are all there, and the extended main show of Racing to Win.